Hey, what's up guys? Dave here with another exciting tutorial. And today I wanna to show how to render a wireframe in Maya. Now, let's first talk about why we wanna render a wireframe or what that means. Well, if I go here um, and I can see that the here's the wireframe of the model. And this is what an employer would wanna see if they're gonna hire somebody as a modeler. Okay, what they want to make sure is that the, the model isn't too dense, that it has good edge flow, and there's a number of reasons why somebody would want to see a wireframe. Okay, but how do you render a wireframe? Because if I render this out right now, uh, we're not going to see these lines. Okay, that's what we want to see. So that's what I want to talk about is how to do that and how to do it so it looks good. So um, first of all, if I uh, render this out with Arnold, so if I open the Arnold render view, and let's just go, go ahead and see what I have here if I hit render. So I'm gonna hit this play button, and uh, it says, hey, there's no lights in the scene. So, well, you know, that's uh, good to know. Um, but maybe I'm gonna leave no lights in the scene and see if I need them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this whole thing, and I'm gonna right click, assign new material, and then I'm gonna to go to Arnold Shader. And at the bottom here, I can see AI Wireframe. Okay, so now if I click on that, now I can see that I didn't even need a uh, light in the scene to render this, okay? Because before it was giving us a warning, but now Maya knows that we don't need lights to see this. And you can see something that the wireframe does not look exactly like the wireframe that I'm seeing here. First of all, I feel like this is triangulated, and once again, this looks very messy compared to what I'm seeing here. So the way that we fix that is if I go, if I right click and go to material attributes, now it should bring up the attributes of the material, and that's over here. And if you don't see that, it'll be the farthest tab to the right. So if there's a lot of tabs over here, you just have to keep clicking until you find AI wireframe. And the edge type is set to triangles, I'm gonna switch it to polygons. And just by doing that, you can see that now it looks correct, okay? One thing that I wanna point out though, is watch what happens if I press three on something. So if I select this and press three, look at how dense it becomes, okay? And that's bad, okay? So you might be saying, well, why is that? So I'm gonna press one on these, and let's take a look at why that is. So I'm gonna take this shape, for example, I'm gonna duplicate this, and um, if I press, actually, I'm gonna take this shape. I think we'll be able to see it better on this one. So if I duplicate this shape, um, you can see how kind of like faceted it is, meaning kind of how jagged the edges are. And if I press three, we can see it becomes significantly smoother, okay? Now, what's happening when I press three? And if I press one to get back, What's happening, I'm just gonna duplicate this. What's happening when you press three is it's actually smoothing the mesh and it actually smooths it twice. So if I go to mesh smooth and mesh smooth again, that's what it's doing when I press the three button. It's giving me a preview to what it looks like here. Now, you can see how much denser the wire is. So if I render this out, so if I open the Arnold render view and hit play, and look at these shapes, you can see that when I press three, this shape looks identical to this one because this one was the one that smoothed twice. And if I press one, this one looks like this. So I want, anytime I'm doing the wireframe, I want it to be in one mode. In other words, I want the fewest amount of kind of wireframe as possible. I don't want something super dense like this. Um, and a good kind of rule of thumb, I feel, is if you, um, I'm going to go back to my render view, hit play. If your model is mostly white when you're viewing it like this, that means you have good wireframe, okay, or not too dense. But if it if it gets, um, you can see that when I zoom way, way out, um, you can see how the wire, like here, gets super, super dense um, or it gets super black. That usually is an indication that your wire might be too dense. So if you had a character in their hands were super black and their face was super black, generally that means that the wire is too dense. Um, 
And I'm gonna double check here. So if I select this and press one, yeah, so it's in one mode, so that's good. Okay, now I could be happy with my wireframe here, but I'm not. I'm gonna try to make this even look better. So I can see that it might be kind of tough to tell like the intricate kind of shape of the model. So here's a cool trick that I like to do. I'm gonna go back to the material attributes and I can see that it's the furthest tab to the right. And if I click on that, notice the fill color here. If I click on the fill color, I could change this to any color that I want, okay? Now, I'm not gonna pick a solid color. Instead, I'm gonna do what's called ambient occlusion. So now if I go to fill color, I'm gonna click right here. And now if I go to Arnold uh, Shader, I'm gonna go to the top one here, which is ambient occlusion. And when I click on that, you can see what it did, okay? It shadowed in the areas um, in there. I can still see the wire on it, but I feel like it really helps to make it look nice. Okay, so if I compare that to, if I'm material attributes, um, if I wanna see what it looks like without it, like if I change my mind, I would go to fill color and I would go to break connection. And there's what it looks like without it. And you can see that I could put this back to white. That's what it looks like without it. And you can see that I can't really see the shape that well. I mean, like, once again, I'm talking in by the motor here. So if I go here, and then if I go to Arnold, Shader, AI Ambient Occlusion, now I see that the sh I can see the shape a lot better. Okay, now, once again, uh, maybe I'm done at this point here with that, but I feel like I'm gonna go even one step further. I'm gonna change the background color. So if I go to my render settings, and I'm gonna switch this to Arnold Render. I'm gonna go here to Arnold Render. I'm gonna to go to Environment, Background, and then I'm gonna go right here and say, Create Ray Switch Shader. Okay, so down here on Background, if I click here, I'm gonna to go to Create Ray Switch Shader. And now here I can choose where it says Camera. This is my background color. So. I'm going to, instead of making it black, I'm gonna make it kind of like, um, you can see I could make it lighter. Maybe I want it to be like a gray. Okay, I kind of feel like that looks nice. That way, if we have black edges or something on the wireframe, we could see that. Now, I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna kind of put the, uh, a ground plane on here. So for the ground plane, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna create a polygon plane. And I think what a lot of people do is um, they make like, you know, they give the ground plane a wireframe. And I feel like that looks really cheesy. Like that's just unnecessary. And also a weird thing about a ground plane is this awkward background. Okay, like this edge. Like is this in a corner of the room or what is this? Um, and the reason that I want the ground plane is I want it to catch a nice shadow on the ground to make it look like it's not floating in space. But I don't like this other kind of negative attributes of the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go click on this ground and I'm gonna say assign new material, Arnold shader, and I'm gonna go to shadow mat. Okay, um, here it is, AI shadow mat. Now when I click on that, it's going to um, be a nice shadow that's if I, I guess if I had a light in the scene. Okay, so if I shined, um, if I put a light in the scene, and maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna go lights, sky dome light. Mm, okay, yeah, I guess I don't really like that. I'm gonna delete that. And actually what I might try is I might try this. Um, let's see, so if I go to shadow mat here. Um, I'm gonna just try putting a light in the scene. So if I go to create lights, spotlight. Now, if I go to, I can scale this up to see what I can see. And then I'll go panels, look through selected. And now if I go like this, now I am the light kind of looking through it and I'm shining down on my scene here. And I'll go panels perspective back to my perspective view. And now I might in my attribute editor, kind of crank up my intensity here. Okay, and there you can start to see that I can see the shadow 
on the ground. Okay, maybe I don't even need this that much. Uh, looks like, okay, I do. So now you might be saying, well, that shadow is too intense. So what I could do is I could go back to my ground, go to my shadow mat, and then I could change the shadow opacity. And I really don't want the shadow opacity to be that much. I just want to kind of make it more, more or less look like it the motorcycle is not floating in midair. Now, notice that I have this as use background um, or shadow mat. So that means that it's going to be identical to the background color here. And um, so I don't have that kind of that awkward wall. And it's just kind of catching the shadow. Um, now, the final thing, if I right click, go to material attributes, here I can, if I want to change my wireframe color, I could do that here. So maybe I want to make it like a, a gray or something. And then here's the line width. So if I wanted to make it thicker lines, I find um, I usually have a line width of one or maybe um, less, okay? Maybe on a close-up render, um, a line width, uh, kind of a smaller, tighter wireframe might look nice. Maybe I'll try 0.75. And um, so I've got line color, but I feel like the key is this polygon fill. I have it at ambient occlusion. And then I have the AI wireframe shader here, background matte here. And then on the AI wireframe, frame shader, I have the ambient occlusion shader plugged in on fill color. And I also have polygons for edge type, so I'm not getting this triangulation. So hopefully that was helpful. And if it was, go ahead and give a thumbs up, subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. All right, guys, thanks a lot. And I'll see you next time.